Hello YouTube, my name's Ant, welcome to episode 11 of my canoe build. So this is um, my paddle shape I've come up with, it's like a beaver tail with apparently this is called a northwest grip. I uh, got that from <coughs> Ray Goodwin's video, one of his videos. And then what I've done is I've kind of sectioned it up so that I can lay it out on a full scale, full size. So here we are. Put it on this bit of hardboard. All the way down. Something like that. So I'm going to cut that out. Obviously I can refine the shape. Once I get it onto the wood that I'm going to use, which is going to be either ash or cherry. got this book by Ted Moore's quite famous book Canoe Craft and in one of the back sections it's got um, making your own paddle which is pretty handy and it's got it's got dimensions and sizes how you go about it certain order of things so kind of using that as a reference really lots of stuff online of course as well but I'm going to go with Ted Moore's book dimensions so I've just put a centre line on the paddle and marked it a bit more accurately I'm a little bit out on this edge so I've got a really define the exact shape before we go any further. <laughs>
I've just dressed one side of the paddle and used my really pretty sharp planes just sharpen the blades up and it's really hard and you can see here this is the sort of lines I'm going to go down to each side there's so much stock there that I've decided a bit madness just to um, plane it off so I'm going to circle the saw lots of lines in it chisel it out and then I'll plane the finished shape once I've got the bulk of the wood off also this knot here once I've planed it I can see I've got a bit of a hole in it it's a bit unfortunate but I can fill that resin and on the other side it's pretty much alright so hopefully I'll get away with that So I've just got to cut all those bits out now. Left a bit of room. And it's going to be a sort of spine down here. And a sort of transition into the blade. Just marked out the handle. This is roughly how I want it. Best I can get it. I'm going to cut in the top of the wood here, cut some lines out so I can chisel that out. The reason it's offset one side is because it's got a bit of a bow in it, the wood, so I'm just slightly correcting that. Luckily the grain's still running nice and straight through that bit. <laughs> So I've just been getting the stuff out of this knot and a big piece come out right in the middle of the blade so I've got these other little bits but they're all crumbly the rest of it's pretty solid so basically I'm going to put a load of resin in there put that back in and then I'm going to put the sawdust that I've got out of here in the resin so it kind of looks fairly natural now I've got some bits of the same sort of colour that came out at the top of this knot so I'm just creating some sawdust and then I'm going to put that dust in the resin and I just taped off the back because there's a very slight hole where the bottom of the uh, knot is stopped the resin running out
this is how far I've got on my paddle. Getting pretty quite nice now. I haven't rounded the actual stem of the paddle yet, handle. And I just found out that a good paddle weight is about 23 ounces. So and that's about 0.65 kilos. So I've got me got my kitchen scales there. I'll just put the paddle on top and there you go, that's just a bit less than a kilo. Okay, I just mark the shaft with a circle and uh, just working out an even amount to take off. So I've marked the same on this side. So I'm going to take these edges off to make it into an octagon. So I just finished fiberglass in the blade. It's come out pretty well. I've just got to rub it down again now and put some varnish on it because the varnish has got the um, UV protection. I think the um, resin breaks down in UV light, so you've got a varnish on top of. Um, Resin. So this is page 101 in Tom Hill's book and this is showing his backrest seat thwart for the Charlotte canoe that I'm building. Uh, sort of swivels that thing there. So you sit on the floor of the canoe and your back goes against it. 
and generally use a double paddle but I don't want to do that because I'm not really into using a double paddle don't really want to get into that I want to use a single paddle and do the J stroke that kind of thing and also when you're sitting against this kind of thing back against it and you're sitting on the floor carrying your feet out you're kind of in an L position which I find really uncomfortable for my back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a kneeling, kneeling thwart that's a piece of wood at a slight angle so your backside sits on it and then you're kneeling in the base of the canoe so basically what I've got to do now is work out how to make some brackets to hold the kneeling thwart bit of wood in and sort of go over the gunnel bolt into the gunnel so I've come up with this sort of idea I've got some 304 stainless which I can bend the kind of bracket so this will go over the gunnel and then this bottom bit here is sort of like a Z shape I can bolt the kneeling thwart onto the bottom flat there and obviously there will be one on the other side so I've just been online and looked at kneeling thwarts and uh, 22 degrees is about the angle I've seen people talking about what the kneeling thwart should be at so I've cut, cut a couple of blocks 22 degrees and you can see on this picture here I've basically measured from the floor up to the bottom of the gunnel and I'll set that height up on the, my shed floor with a couple of drawers either side these blocks on top and then my bit of wood that's going to be the kneeling court on top and I sat on it and just put my knees on the ground and see what it felt like it's a bit tight but I can get my feet underneath and it feels pretty comfortable at 22 degrees so I'm going to go with that so after a bit of experimentation I've come up with this kind of thing um, I've got enough stone still to do it so it's that sort of shape so that'll sit on the gunnel this top bit here and then that's obviously the 22 degree angle which the kneeling thought could be bolted onto and what I'm going to do is put some bolts through the top and basically they can go through one of the scupper holes I've worked out so this is sit over the top and the scupper holes kind of just underneath like that and I can put some bolts through holding that together and then some sort of plate on the bottom nuts on so that should be alright and I thought what I can do is um, in the scupper hole I'm actually going to put like a plastic block so that I could do wood I suppose um, some more spruce but I think plastic's better because I won't have to mess around with all the finishing and that so plastic would be uh, watertight obviously waterproof um, so that's the plastic block can go inside that scup hole so when I put the drills in drill the holes in for the bolts that's not gonna it's not gonna move around at all it's gonna be solid when I bolt it together so I've got this bit of I think it's called Delrin um, really good plastic to machine because it's really machines really well trouble is it's round of course and I want to I want to create some things like this. This is pretty much identical to the scupper hole. This is a spacer block, so the spacer blocks go either side of the scupper hole, it? and that's pretty much exactly dimensions of the scupper hole. So rather than buy anything else off the internet, which is kind of flat like that, I just thought I'd use up what I've got as you do. So first thing I've got to do is cut that directly down the middle so it works out I'll get about two blocks out of it like that and um, obviously I've got to cut this down the middle so that's quite hard anyone trying to bandsaw the thing in half 
it's not too uh, not too easy really so I'm going to have to sort of jig that up so I can push it through nice and straight okay so before I cut this bit of plastic obviously got a marker line down the side there but as I start to feed it through the bandsaw I want to get an exact halfway line on the end there so there's a little trick you can do basically got a bit of car there it's like a little sort of jig drawing jig and I've drawn a vesica pisces two circles once you draw one circle put your compass point exactly the same diameter put your compass point on the edge of the circle and draw another circle and then in the middle you'll get this kind of diamond shape put a line through through the middle it's like from from your actual um, compass points join them up and then you get an equilateral triangle and it's like a really accurate way of getting an equilateral triangle get the halfway point this edge and get a good card I think I've glued glued this on put it right up to the top point and on the halfway point then you've exactly split them in half so what you do now any circle because I've made it this sort of size so I can get smaller circles bigger circles you sort of pull it up like that so it's it's touching these sides these both these sides and it's falls down into that top of that triangle so you do that and then you draw a line there like that and then you turn it around draw another line and then where the lines intersect is exactly the centre there you go got them in half now so they're a bit rough but I'm going to sand the bottom of that so I've got a good surface, flat surface to reference off to square it all up Just peeled off the double sided tape. Just check that's the right. Yeah. Back in there. Yeah. Over like that. Make sure it's in the right position. So I've just back home now, just cut them to the size on my circular saw and put those slots in. 
So this is a bolt that's going to hold them, so they fit in that slot pretty snugly. And they're sort of flush. So hopefully that's going to do the job. Here's the finished bracket I've bolted together. Just test it out, you can see there. And the woodwork goes. I've just temporarily taped on the thwart seat, the brackets, all looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is reach underneath and push the bolt up through the holes in the brackets and then mark the thwart seat so I can drill the holes to secure it in. I've drilled the holes in my kneeling thwart <laughs> each end for the brackets and it's basically a 4mm bolt I'm going through there. Uh, it's not quite coming out enough so rather than buy more bolts I'm going to recess that slightly plus it will be better. When I'm sitting on it I won't catch that. It'll be nice and flush. So to do that I've got to use this drill here but obviously because I've already drilled the hole I can't find the centre exactly. I want it to be nice and central around that hole so I've got this piece of card I've just punched a hole in the same diameter as the drill I'm going to use place it over there draw around it like that and that'll give me a so now I've got a visual reference where to drill it. So this is where I'm going to build a small shelter for my canoe, keep the sun and rain off. Just made a bit of a sketch of the area 
just to work out a few of the measurements have this sort of corrugated bitumen roof on so I'm going to put a post right on the corner here and there's a concrete base at the bottom so I had to buy this so I'm going to secure this into concrete these bolts you'll see the poster going there and then on top there's going to be this 2x5 bit of wood and this is going to attach to my existing gate post This uh, jiffy hanger at the door end. It's all pretty solid. Goes all the way along to that post. Just drawing up my boat emblem. Just had to redraw this ant that I used, been used before. Just tightening it all up. Just got to change all these colours. There's a reason I bought this. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice one. <laughs> yes. That's all finished now. Got my boat in the boat shed. All ready to launch. In the next episode, I'll be launching my canoe on the River Mole. So thanks for watching and see you later.